Hi everyone, Kate here to talk about all of the four and five star Victorian books that I read in the year 2023. At the beginning of the year, I started off on a project of um, reading 25 Victorian books throughout the year, and I had no idea how much I was going to enjoy the project. It just was a really lovely, um, very achievable kind of project, but it still felt like enough of a challenge. It was just right at my threshold what I wanted. Um, and I want to look up how many Victorian books I did end up reading. Okay, so I think I got to 29, actually. Yeah, 29. Um, which is very exciting. And in this video, just so it's not too much of a downer, I'm not going to talk about the books that were one, two, or three star. Uh, three star is kind of middling, but I just thought I would limit it to four and five star to kind of talk about just how um, much I enjoyed reading these books, tell you about them. Maybe if you were wanting some other uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, lesser known Victorian literature to read, these are none of these are real, kind of greatest hits of Victorian books. Uh, and I'm looking forward to telling you about them. Uh, the first one was Chantry House. And this was one of the very first books I read last year. And it was such a lovely way to start off the Victorian reading year. It's a Charlotte Mary Young book about a family that inherits this house in a distant county. And it is also haunted by a ghost. So that felt very different for um, Charlotte Mary Young. She is not really a ghost story kind of author. But it also had a very Victorian flair to it. There was um, a kind of moral involved. And it was just highly enjoyable. She writes family stories so well. And I really loved getting to spend time with this family, getting to find out the backstory of the ghost as well. Um, and uh, just, yeah, just really love spending time in her books. The next one was the Journals of George Eliot. And this one, um, it was interesting because there was a lot of kind of mundane details that you're given in her journals. She felt ill. She, uh, she felt, felt ill a lot of the time. Um, so there was, you know, felt unwell again today, felt unwell again today. A lot of that kind of the mundane details. But then there were some lovely details in there. Like she talks about killing off a certain character with great delight. Um, she also talks about the books that she's reading. And um, kind of her idea of fun is translating German philosophy. That was her idea of an ideal evening. Uh, you do hear about kind of just the different phases that were in her life, the different stages. And it, um, also she wrote, sometimes there were a couple vacations that she went on and she wrote about those times. And it was just really interesting, uh, an interesting window kind of into her life to get to know her a bit better. Uh, then the third one was The Young Pretenders by Edith Henrietta Fowler. And this was a charming children's story uh, about ba Babs is our main character. And you're seeing the world through her eyes. Her parents are away in India. Her father is an officer. And so at first she's staying with one family member and then she's uh, or she's staying with a nanny and then she goes to stay with a family member. And um, just seeing the world through her eyes is really charming and endearing. And um, uh, she, I found her such a precocious uh, narrator and just really, really liked it. So it is uh, somewhat quiet of a book. And at first I came out like, oh, I don't know about this. And the, the writing style is also very unique. I haven't read anything else that really felt like it. Um, so it took me a little while to find my footing with it. But now, you know, after I finished it and it sat with me for a bit, I thought that was a really lovely, lovely book. Uh, so I look forward to rereading it at some point in the future. Uh, the next one is Moonfleet by Jamie Faulkner. This is a very much a boy's adventure story. Um, and it involves, uh, oh my God, it involves smuggling and it's set in Cornwall. And, um, but they end up traveling all over the place. It was pretty unpredictable with what happened. It was a little bit more sad than I was anticipating it was going to be. Um, and it was a really lovely adventurous story. Um, so I definitely recommend it. Uh, then The Perpetual Curate by Margaret Oliphant. This definitely took a bit of concentration to get through this one. I find that Margaret Oliphant's writing, um, I did definitely enjoy this, but her her writing, the reading of it doesn't necessarily come very naturally to me. 
Uh, so I am really pleased that I read it though because it's left a very positive memory for me. This is for the Anthony Trollope fans out there. I think that um, her Carlingford Chronicles would really be enjoyable. And I especially enjoyed, there's three um, very nosy spinster ants in this. And um, just seeing the antics that they get up to made it really amusing. Um, and getting to see small town life, just it had a lot of charm to it. And then the next one is Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. This book took me so long to get into. It was my third try reading it, and it took me, I think, around 250 pages to actually be fully on board enjoying it. Um, but once I did, it blew me absolutely away. It, this It might be my favorite Victorian read of the year. Just it has left such an impression on me and I love when Anthony Trollope includes a darker plot line because it's such a great balance to all of the more lighthearted things that take place in his stories. I found Alice Vavasor such a fascinating character. So it was a great start to the Palliser series. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy Phineas Finn nearly as much. So that really has taken the wind out of my sails um, as far as going through the Palliser series. So I'm really glad that... Um, I'm just reading the Pallister series at whatever pace I feel like. I would like to get through the Eustace Diamonds sooner rather than later, um, but I just needed to recover after really not enjoying Phineas Finn that much. And uh, then the next one is Idols of the King by Alfred Lord Tennyson. What a magnificent narrative poem talking about different Arthurian legends. Uh, and the different quests that these characters go on and the ways that they are trying to attain virtue. It's a beautiful, beautiful portrayal of these different myths and legends and getting to see uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson's take on it in his beautiful language. It was one that as soon as I finished, I thought, cannot wait to reread this. Um, the language was just so unbelievably rich. I feel like you can endlessly um, gain uh, from reading it. So it's one that I I'm really looking forward to revisiting, hopefully, many, many times in my life. And then the next one was Countess Kate by Charlotte Mary Young. This is one that when I've recommended it to friends, it seems to get mixed reviews. But I think since I'm just so, such a diehard Charlotte Mary Young fan um, that I really love this. It's very quaint. Uh, I found Kate such an endearing character. Um, she is... Uh, has this title of Countess thrust upon her when she has not been at all raised for that. And so her lifestyle really changes in a way that she doesn't like. And it's a lot more kind of stuffy and buttoned up. And she uh, just has to really uh, kind of grapple with what her life is like now that it's so different. And I, I was cheering her on the whole story. And I really felt for her when she had to live a very different life than what she was used to. And then the next one that I thoroughly enjoyed was The Moorland Cottage by none other than Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, this, it doesn't have, it's not the strongest for characterization, which I do think is a weakness in some of Elizabeth Gaskell's writing. However, I love her writing so much that when the characterization is weaker, I still can thoroughly enjoy a book. Um, and this was the inspiration actually for George Eliot's The Mill on the Floss, um, but I definitely prefer this, uh, I think because of Gaskell's writing and the ending is a bit more redemptive um, than it is in The Mill on the Floss. And I loved the, really the world building that Elizabeth Gaskell has in this. And there's just some delightful um, scene setting that makes you be able to picture the scenes so very vividly. And the next Victorian book, uh, was The Trumpet Major by Thomas Hardy. Uh, I did not go into this thinking I was going to um, have an absolute blast reading it, but I really did. It was just um, quite the page turner. And so much happened in such a short novel. Uh, there is a love, uh, what is it? A love pentagon, I think we figured out in this one. Really, people are making a mess of their relationships, but Something about it, it just, I really enjoyed watching the story unfold, not knowing what was going to happen. It felt very unpredictable. And I enjoyed also, there are two brothers that um, could not be more different. So I enjoyed their personalities being contrasted to each other. Something about the 
relationship politics of the story, I just found really compelling uh, and made me want to keep on reading. So delighted to have really enjoyed a Hardy book this year. And the next one is The Belton Estate by Anthony Trollope. This one I think I was just the most smitten with. I came out very enamored with it. I really enjoy um, kind of grandiose Victorian novels with a huge cast of characters, but this felt like a real breath of fresh air when you have a cast of characters that is 10 or, or even less than that. Um, I really enjoyed the very intimate feel, getting to know the very small cast of characters and getting to see everything unfold uh, in their lives around them. And it just had uh, one character that I was rooting for him so hard the whole book and really wanting him to get his happy ending. And I just really enjoyed the simplicity of the story and it felt um, just, I really fell in love with this book. So very much enjoyed The Belton Estate and it has me so excited to continue reading much more by Anthony Trollope. Uh, then another Charlotte Mary Young, and that is The Stokesley Secret. And this was one that, um, another one with the simplicity of the plot. It's following this family, but the story was, um, it was a shorter Charlotte Mary Young, and it just had this real uh, kind of purity to it. And you're getting to see uh, the tutor, whose name is Christabel, which I just loved. And then I found out that Charlotte Mary Young had a good friend named Christabel, so I think she was her namesake, which I thought was really, really touching that Charlotte uh, Mary Young would have named a character after a close friend. Um, while the parents are away, the mother has poor health. And so they have to go to London and they're seeing different doctors to try to see if they can do something for the mother's um, poor health. And so the governess is trying to hold down the fort and do it well. And she is uh, really wants to do right by this family and to teach them well, to educate them well, but also, um, you know, have them know how to relax and have times of leisure. And I just found it really endearing being with this family. And the title made it sound like a sensation novel. So I thought, I can't wait to read this. Charlotte Mary Young writing a sensation novel. It is not at all that. It is her very typical brand. Um, and something about it just made me really fall in love with it. And then the next one, and I think this one was the most challenging uh, out of the Victorian reading that I did this year, but I gave it a whopping five stars. I have not spoken about it yet um, after completing it because I feel so inadequate to speak about it, but that is The Cloister and the Hearth. I labored so much over reading this. I took, I think, about five months to finish this because I would just get so bogged down with the historical details and also... Whenever you're reading Victorian literature, it's all already, it's like you're having to interpret a different dialect because it's written in kind of Victorianese, right? So then historical, um, this is a historical novel set in the, I think it's the 14th century. So on top of that, it's like more dialect decoding. Um, and it just took a lot of mental stamina. And so I really liked that I wasn't reading it on any sort of schedule. I think if I had been reading on a schedule, I would have given up. Um, but since I thought, you know what, I'm just, this year, I'm hoping to finish The Cloister and the Hearth. And I think I finished it sometime in September, I think um, is when, and I started it maybe in February. So it took a long time. Um, and it was just, I, I can't, it, it's really haunted me since finishing it. It's um, a story of star-crossed lovers um, and you're really, you're so invested in whether they're going to end up together or not. And there are so many twists and turns, so many obstacles that get in the way. And at the end of the book, I just wept. I wept and wept. Um, I couldn't believe how, um, much I had come to care about these star-crossed lovers, about whether they would end up together. And something about it just, it was really moving to me. So Charles Reed heard about um, the uh, church theologian Erasmus and the story, his parents, his father was a priest and um, kind of that was just his inspiration. So I have no idea how much of the story is based on, you know, real things that happened, um, but it was just quite the adventure. There were several parts of the book that I was just really 
not interested in the story. I did contemplate DNFing several times, but now that I finished it, I'm so glad that I didn't. So I was getting reward enough that I knew I think I should continue to stick with the story. So I'm very, very glad that I did now. And um, yeah, I can't recommend the cloister and the hearth enough. Uh, then the next one that was a very mixed reading experience for me, and that is The Pillars of the House by Charlotte Mary Young. It's one of those um, books. It felt like getting to know um, an acquaintance and uh, then kind of your circumstances change and you don't you don't uh, see them anymore and you think, I just wish I had gotten to know them better. And this is a book that I felt like I was reading it, but with a, a fog kind of covering my comprehension and my kind of kinship to the book, uh, the style that it was written in. I, there was a lot that I really did like about it. I think I'm more just sad that I didn't fall completely in love with it because the stuff, the parts that I liked about the book, I really liked. It had one of my favorite proposal scenes um, and out of any Charlotte Mary Young, but it also just felt too long at the end of the day. So I'm still very glad that I read it. Um, I would like to read everything by Charlotte Mary Young. I don't know if that will actually happen, but it's a, a general goal of mine. Um, and so, yeah, it's very, very mixed reading experience. Um, then the next one is uh, Uncle Silas. And this was a book that came at just the right time. I was kind of just waiting for Victober to get there. It was the middle of September and I really wanted to do some Victorian reading. And so I did indulge and I went ahead and I read Uncle Silas. And um, this was just such a pacey suspense novel. Um, Maud is your main character. She's telling you her story. And um, the amount that I was kind of intrigued by the plot felt the same as Jane Eyre. I didn't come out loving it as much as Jane Eyre, but it felt as uh, propulsive of reading as Jane Eyre did. And it was, um, it had some really dark plot elements, but I was in the mood for that. So, um, you know, Maud has grown up knowing she has this uh, family member, Uncle Silas, who is not on good terms with her family. He is estranged from them. And then um, different circumstances happen where eventually Maud is going to meet Uncle Silas. And so you get to know this character. Um, yeah, really interesting and completely unpredictable. Uh, the next one was Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is right up there with Idols of the King as far as narrative poetry goes. Um, I adore, absolutely adore the character of Aurora. Um, and I just found myself so absolutely fascinated by her. The language in this story, in this poem, is so beautiful. Um, and one that I think can just uh, reward readers endlessly. So it's one that I'll definitely be coming back to. I would love to memorize portions of it. It was just so beautiful. Um, so I really loved Aurora Lee. That was definitely a highlight of Victorian reading. Um, then one that I have on this list because it was such a fun time reading it, and that is The Prude's Progress by Jerome K. Jerome. This was a play that I did as a read aloud with uh, friends on my Patreon, and we had so much fun. There was so much laughing out loud at just how hysterical this play was. And um, getting to... Uh, Getting to see the madness unfold, it's kind of a comedy of errors and some mistaken identity, and it was just delightful getting to see it all unfold in real time, and um, yeah, just so much fun reading it with friends. That was what really made it enjoyable to me. Uh, then The Fairy Book by Dinah Crake. This is a book that um, Dinah Crake's language was so beautiful, retelling these, these stories, um, and Again, I will say, um, when I did my wrap up, The Iron Stove was such a magnificent fairy tale. It was so different from any other fairy tale that I've read. Uh, and I desperately want a great retelling to be done of it. It was so fascinating and um, going to uh, endless lengths for the, the one that you love. I just thought it was so beautiful and romantic and I really, really loved it. Uh, and then lastly, a five-star Charlotte Mary Young to end the year with. Um, so it was a lovely, lovely treat. After, during Victober, you know, I read Pillars of the House and I felt very, um, I felt very mixed. Uh, I felt very conflicted. That's the word I'm looking for. Conflicted uh, about my reading experience. And then 
Um, I didn't really enjoy another one by her. So then to get to Dine of Our Terrace, and I think it's my, no, I know it's my favorite out of the, all the Charlotte Mary Young books that I read this year. So I think between, um, goodness, Chantry House, then I read Countess Kate, then I read The Stokely Secret, Pillars of the House, and then Friarswood Post Office, and then, yeah, six Charlotte Mary Young. That is wild because it doesn't feel like that. You know when it's a favorite author, the, the reading does not feel at all like work. Um, by far my favorite. I love this story. This was the one that had a smaller cast of characters and it just felt really nice just to stick with those um, characters. Um, it starts out with uh, Louis and he, uh, his cousin Mary and Mary has grown up in Peru and she has come back with her mother. Her mother is not doing very well health wise. Um, so she's hoping maybe being back in um, her home country of England, she might be able to make some recoveries in her health. Um, and then also there's another there's uh, another set of cousins, siblings, um, and they you follow their friendship with Louis and with Mary. And there's some kind of uh, tangled webs with uh, romantic uh, relationships. And I just found every bit of this delightful. There's also some bits with the French Revolution. Um, so I love the pacing of it. It just felt just the right amount, gentle, but also action propelling things forward. It was a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, loved it from start to finish. It is a longer one because it was two volumes, but it didn't feel long at all. So that's just the glory of reading a favorite author. That is my kind of Victorian reading highlights from this year. It was really delightful. Um, really challenging myself with how much I read. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to read 25 Victorian books this next year. Um, ideally, I would like to, but I definitely have some because of my Patreon and also my um, Victober five-star uh, predictions. I definitely want to get through those. Uh, so we'll be making time for some Victorian reading just as much as last year. I don't know. Um, hopefully, I'll have some new favorites to add to the list after that. Thank you as always for watching. I hope that you have a lovely day and I will be back with another video soon. Bye.